If I've learned anything as a gamer, it's that I should hate social justice warriors, and that modern tutorials really suck. Just go on YouTube, and you'll find at least a hundred videos criticizing modern tutorials for being too text-heavy and overly long, while you'll find another hundred videos praising games like Shovel Knight, Mega Man, and Super Mario Bros as the ways tutorials should be done. By letting the level design speak for itself and letting the player pretty much figure out what's going on. Unfortunately, there's always been an unaddressed caveat. What happens when your game has too many systems and needs a long amount of text to help players know what's going on? It can be hard to make a complex tutorial fun, spread out, and not feel incredibly forced. There's really not a lot of games that pull this off well. But in my opinion, one of the best modern tutorials and a great example for other games to follow comes from Shin Megami Tensei 4 and its opening hours in the Eastern Kingdom of Mikado. Hi, I'm Slightly In Depth Gaming and let's talk about Persona's slightly stranger brother. The opening hours of SMT4, spent in the Eastern Kingdom of Mikado, are essentially one extended tutorial. And yes, I said hours. And yes, I mean this as a good thing. A lot of games know that their tutorial is boring, so they'll try to stuff their tutorial in about 30 minutes of gameplay, which is simply ineffective. The player can get distracted, confused, and it's hard to sit down and learn a game for 30 minutes straight. SMT, on the other hand, feeds the player information over the course of a couple hours, letting the player understand the mechanics of the game on a different level, through their own experiences. For example, one of the main mechanics of the game, the Scout Command. After you complete your first battle of the game, you're oddly sexualized AI, Burroughs, tells you that you can talk to demons and have them join your side. You get a quest requiring three demons to have joined your side before you can move on, and you get into a pretty forced battle. Pretty standard tutorial stuff here. Once you get into that fight, the AI tells you that demons will ask questions and have demands. And then the game explains nothing else about scouting. You see, demons aren't like Pokemon. They have different alignments, personalities, beliefs. They act like creatures that just want to live another day. And all of that has to be taken into account when using the scout command. Even if you answer a demon's questions the right way, it's not even guaranteed they'll join your side. When I did this quest, it took me a bit because I had one demon ask for a bunch of items then run away when they took as much as they could, and another one wrecked my team because I answered a question the very wrong way. The game needed text to explain the mechanic, but the player was able to discover the depth of the system on their own. This tell, then show style, permeated throughout the tutorial of SMT4. The game tells you about demon fusion, but it's up to the player to figure out how to make demons that use their passed down skills effectively. The game tells you how to exploit enemy weaknesses, but you're not going to get far in the game if you didn't learn how to do it. The game will tell you how to change your camera angle to find hidden passageways, but it's up to the player to find that sign. And don't worry, the player will know how to do this. The final training quest can only be completed by changing your camera angle upwards. Now that's good game design. The game constantly tests your knowledge like this again and again, pitting you against tough demon after tough demon, forcing the player to actually understand the system they were taught about. This is how you do a modern tutorial. And as any good tutorial should, SMT has one final test to make sure the player knows what they're doing, which takes the form as a boss fight at the end of the forest. It's 
pretty easy if you know what you're doing though. But there's no other boss that could possibly signal the end of the opening hours of the game that truly tests your acquired skills. Okay, let's talk about the Minotaur. Ask anyone who's played this game before, and they probably will have suffered massive amounts of trauma and PTSD from this boss. Because the Minotaur essentially kicks down your door and says, the tutorial is now over. This is the first true boss fight of the game. And the first time you fight him, he's gonna kill you. He can basically wipe out your entire party in one shot if he gets a single critical. And it might seem unfair. In fact, sometimes it is unfair. But in reality, the game has given you every tool to get past this boss. You start to figure things out. Okay, he's weak to ice and only uses physical attacks, so this demon knocker who can increase your defense and comes with Bufu is perfect for this fight. Unfortunately, you can only have one of any species on your side, and the only other demon with an ice attack you can get is a centaur, but his MP and magic stat is really low, so you start getting more complex. You fuse until you can create a demon with a high magic stat and MP to use his ice attack. And it goes even further. You can have a demon pass you a skill if it's leveling up in your party. So just have someone with an ice skill level up next to you and bam! Your main character can not only do big damage, but he can secure extra turns against the Minotaur. And even once you've used every resource possible to prepare against this guy, it's still not going to be enough. In the battle itself, you have to decide when to attack, or heal, or buff yourself. Is it worth it to switch one of your demons now to benefit you next turn, or should you use the demon in your party to do damage this turn? It's a beautiful flurry of decision making, with unlucky moments and critical hits. And to top it all off, the game tests your scouting skills. The Minotaur will ask you questions, which if you answer correctly, will buff yourself up, or weaken the Minotaur. All this combines to be one of the best boss fights in JRPG history, and a great end to a great tutorial. So what's my point here? Why should you care about how great Persona's older, introverted brother is? Well, the fact is that not every game can be Shovel Knight. Tutorials are a necessary evil in complex video games. They sometimes have to use text to break the immersion, because if they didn't, you'd be completely lost. But tutorials don't have to feel forced or feel like tutorials at all. Give your player the bare information they need through text, and then let them experience the depth of that system by themselves. As odd as it sounds, keep your tutorials longer than shorter. Feed the player information over a lengthy period of time, so they can really understand what each action they're making does. Shin Megami Tensei teaches us that even if the tutorial lasts for hours long, if pulled off right, it can feel indistinguishable from the rest of the game. Cause, uh... It certainly didn't feel like hand-holding to me! Okay. Maybe I should do less risque humor for this video. Good thing this game has nothing that I could- You're hot stuff, master. And never mind. Hey guys. So, I got two things to talk about, so I'll try to keep it short. First off, thank you guys for 100 subscribers. This is like validation for my work, and it's nice to know that my videos actually have an audience. And it only took me two months, so that has to mean something. As for on a 100 subscribers special, I have an idea in mind for a longer video, maybe closer to 17-18 minutes, but it'll depend on whether or not I can come up with a nice script. And secondly, school is starting again. This summer went really quick for me because I was constantly working on the channel, but anyway, since school is starting up again, I really don't know how consistent I can be with videos, so if I miss a week, or two, or three, please bear with me. 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye.